Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P. Joe Pizapia. With me today, of course, is Mr. Big Pod Energy, Andrew Erickson himself, BPE. Derek Brown, a.k.a. D-Bro, the king of bros, is with us. And we've got a new friend. I love making new friends here. Mason Dodd joins us. You can follow him on the Twitter machine at Build the Dynasty. He's part of the Fantasy Flock Network. It's his first time here on the show. So we will do everything to make sure he is comfortable. So everyone be on your best behavior. Try not to scare away the new <laughs> guests. But we've got a fantastic show for you today. It is mock draft season. That's right. It's begun. It's June. Today we're doing the PPR mock. I know it's going to make that one guy who likes to comment on the YouTube channel that I say half point PPR and it really really burns him up gets so mad in his grandma's basement that he has to type it every time i screw up or say that instead it's just a ppr mock that's it point per reception that's what we're doing here today and uh mason i want to thank you for joining us and giving us your time and being on the program with us how are you my friend i'm doing great i've been looking forward to this for quite a while now and hey man I'm i'm ready to crush it in this draft i'll tell you that well, you came dressed up, and Joey P appreciates that. Everybody knows I got dressed up for the draft. I am never above wearing a tie. I always like to, you know, get myself all fancy. Derek Brown's idea of dressing up is a tuxedo T-shirt. We all know what that is. Uh, and for my colleagues here, I just want to warn you all. Yeah, you know, this is on a serious note. On Saturday, I was having some ear pain, some issues going on there. It was really actually kind of a bad situation, and uh, I actually broke down and went to the doctor yesterday about it. And uh, turns out I'm okay, no inside damage or anything like that. Uh, But uh, they did give me a steroid drop. So I have eardrops that have steroids in it. So Andrew, I just want you to know, I'm gonna be doing this draft today on performance enhancing drugs. How does that make you feel? Oh my God. Are you gonna draft DeAndre Hopkins then? You can have him. (laughs) You can have him. I am suspended for the first six picks of this draft, I believe, Derek Brown. <laughs> We're not even into five minutes into the show. Joe's already referenced himself in the third person once, and we've already <laughs> dropped and talked about PEDs. Like, this is, we've gone off the rails. This is ridiculous. Mason, there's still time for you to get out if you want. You still <laughs> want to hang out and do a draft with us? Man, man, you have no idea what I'm jacked up on right now. I mean, I just, <laughs> got out of the bathroom. My man. Good response. Good response. He is ready to go. All right. Now, just again, before we kick things off here, I want to remind everybody we're going to be using our mock draft lobby here at fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. You'll see it today. The multi-user drafts that you have going on, they're quick. They're easy to practice with. And uh, you can go against real opponents or the computer generated bots, which Uh, are really good. And that's the whole thing. You want a mock draft software. It's really going to test you and push you, not that's going to just kind of shoot out the same thing every single time. And we've got so many bells and whistles. It's unbelievable what you can do. You can put keepers in if you're a Fantasy Pros member. You can do all kinds of incredible things here with the uh, Draft Wizard product that we have and uh, the public mock drafts will be available this preseason uh, but you can already invite your friends right now to the private mock draft so if you go over to fantasypros.com slash draft wizard you could check that out and uh, send your friends some links we're going to be doing some of these on our discord uh, this month for sure I love doing the mock drafts in fact last week on stages I did one with a bunch of people invited everybody together to the table we all talked about our picks together it was great fun And it was really good to have that open dialogue conversation. And that's why you join us and you're part of the community of Fantasy Pros. And being part of the community also means joining us on our YouTube channel where you can watch this mock draft unfold live right before your eyes and your ears that might be full of steroids, like I said. YouTube.com slash Fantasy Pros. That's the place to be. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click that little bell for notifications. And of course, you'll know every time a beautiful piece of content drops here over at fantasy pros so make sure you uh join that youtube channel right now and uh enjoy the mock draft show on that youtube channel and you can certainly uh make your make your voice known here in the chat as well and all of the uh the comments there that i know Derek brown really appreciates all of your comments so keep telling him how great of a job he did on this draft please that's what i want to know now just for clarification this is indeed a redraft ppr format uh, Mr. Uh, Flock Fantasy himself is going to be up at the number one pick. So Mason's going to pick one. And then my two friends here, Derrickson, have decided to go back to back. So we have uh, this should be fun. You get your popcorn ready, kids. We're going to have uh, Debro at the five pick. We're going to have Mr. BPE, Andrew Erickson at the six. And I told you last time, I said, I'll take the 12 pick. I'm not above it. Let's go. I love the 12. So, gentlemen, are you ready to start your engines here? Let's go. 
All right, so we are going to resume this draft. Now, Mason, it's pretty easy here at the top most of the time. It's that Jonathan Taylor default. Is there anybody else who's entering into that sphere for you in that conversation? And what's the hope for you on the way back in that 2-3 turn? Well, really, if you look at how drafts break down right now, it's 100% Jonathan Taylor. I mean, I wanted to just make myself, oh, okay, I I want to look like a decent drafter. I want to look like I kind of know what I'm doing. So I cheated. I went through and grab the 101. That way I can say, okay, yeah, we'll take JT with the first pick and hope that we get guys like, I mean, if we're looking at this ADP right now, you're telling me there's a chance I'm getting Debo Samuel. There's a chance I'm getting Mike Evans on the way back around. Sign me up for that. We'll, We'll see how it shakes out though. Well, I'll sign you up for Mike Evans. So you are officially on the clock. You made your first pick with Jonathan Taylor, and I'm pretty sure already you're starting out with an A-plus grade here on the Draft Wizard. And we're going to break it all down after the draft. Austin Eckler goes at the 102, Derek Henry at 103, then Joe Mixon at four, which brings Derek Brown up onto the clock at 105. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm just licking my chops. The fact that Christian McCaffrey just fell to me at the 105. Uh, yes, please, and thank you, and let's move on. <laughs> well, there you go. You can't get hard hitting analysis like that anywhere else, folks. That's why you come <laughs> to fan pros and you stay. But look at 105. I certainly understand. Crazy. You know, yeah, but you know what? Is it though? Because two years in a row, hardly any games played. We've been hearing for years before the breakout, man, I don't know if this guy can really hold up to the wear and tear of having that giant workload. Then he had the giant workload and he broke down. And now everyone's buying in after two years of almost inactivity on the football field. So it's not too surprising. Is it Derek? It's surprising to me. I mean, I I think CMC, he's still my first top overall player because when he is on the field, his upside and floor are unmatched. And this is not shade on Jonathan Taylor, but Christian McCaffrey, even last year, even when they had him on a snap count, basically he's on Mm -hmm. the field, he's getting touches. So it's a both a floor and ceiling. And I understand that like, The Carolina offense might not be great this year. That doesn't mean that we can't still watch CMC get fed and if the offensive line's any better. Yeah. I mean, look at the 105, doing backflips. All right. That puts you on the clock here at uh, 106, Mr. BPE. Who'd you take, Erickson? Uh, My number one ranked wide receiver because, like you mentioned, this is a PPR draft. So I expect some of these top tier wide receivers to go toe to toe with some of these top running backs. Like, this is the format where I feel the most confident in going wide receiver in round one because I know they're a a solid stable of backs I can Mm. still get in rounds two and three. So I'm going to go with Justin Jefferson, Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, uh, look, uh, I can't argue with that. That's what I would do. I'm with you. I want to start my team with receivers, and you'll see me start that in just a moment here. Najee Harris goes at 107, then DeAndre Swift at 108, followed by Cooper Cup at 109, Aaron Jones at 110, and Dalvin Cook. All the running backs running today. Really interesting, even though it's the PPR, which means that Devontae Adams and Jamar Chase have both made it down to me. And I mean, you guys already know my fascination with Devontae Adams. You're going to give me Jamar Chase here at the turn. So, yeah, I'm going to take both these guys right here uh, to heck with the running backs. I'll figure it out later. Uh, I'm going to start with the big uh, PPR guys. And I think we're only scratching the surface of what Jamar Chase could be. Uh, Remember, he started off slow because Joe Burrow started off slow as well last year, working his way back from that knee injury. So Jamar Chase already proved that he is in contention for that number one overall wide receiver. And now you're going to give him to me at the turn. I will take him. And I think the uh, demise of Devontae Adams is grossly overstated. Uh, the draft wizard is telling me to take Travis Kelsey, but that's not something I am going to do. So give me Chase. Give me Adams. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me that, which I desire. Uh, continuing on here, Alvin Kamara at the 202. Javante Williams at 203. And then you have Mark Andrews at 204. Travis Kelsey, back-to-back tight ends at 204, 205. 206, Leonard Fournette, playoff Lenny, who came in heavy to camp. Got to watch that. And Big Pot Energy, who's never coming in heavy. He's at the gym three times a day. 207, Erickson, what do you got? I am actually weighing extremely light these days. I've lost a lot of weight since I stopped going to the actual gym and working out at home. So a lot of cardio for me. Mm. I need to get back on the beefcake train, but I'm not going that way in this in this draft. I'm not going with a running back because Stephon Diggs in the middle of the second round in a full point PPR Mm -hmm. draft. And this is why zero RB is a strategy because it lets you pick best player available. So I could reach on a running back here like a Nick Chubb. Oh, who doesn't catch passes? So I'm taking Stephon Diggs easily. There you go. Let's go. Joey P and BPE loading up on the wide receivers. Who knows? Uh, Mason, that that pipe dream of 
Uh, some of those guys you were talking about, Debo Samuel, might just be in play. We'll see what Derek Brown has to say about it. He's up next with the 208. If Erickson was not going to take Stefan Diggs, I surely was. And I'm going to mm-hmm. go with the wide receiver position as well. Uh, a player that I have Diggs and CD Lamb back to back in my rankings. I think we could see him get fed this year. And Michael Gallup, if you look at his entire career, outside of one breakout year, he's largely, and I hate to say this, been, been just a guy. I think CD Lamb could step forward and be that type of alpha. So give me Lamb here. Love the lamb pick. Excellent pick there. Well done, Derek Brown. Nick Chubb goes next at 209. Tyreek Hill at 210. James Conner at the 211. That puts Mr. Fantasy Flock Network up Mason Dodd for two picks. The end of the second, top of the third. Oh, this is beautiful. This is exactly what we were looking for. (laughs) Debo Samuel somehow, some way, making it to the 12th pick in the second round. I will say... You're going to see some regression from Debo Samuel this upcoming season. If you look at his average at the target, it doesn't necessarily line up with exactly what we would expect with Trey Lance. Who Trey Lance, when the pocket collapses, he's not going to have to dump it off. He's not going to have to hit the wide receiver just going across the line of scrimmage. He can actually go out there and scramble. So that's going to hurt the overall target share for Debo Samuel, in my opinion. And also, the eight rushing touchdowns you saw last year, not going to be there either. You are going to get some mm-hmm. of those rushing touchdowns vultured by Trey Lance at the goal line. So there are reasons to assume that Debo Samuel takes a step back this upcoming season. But the man was the wide receiver three on a points per game basis last year. And you're getting yeah. him here at the 212 when he's stepping into his prime. He's drafted in 2019. He's still on his rookie deal at the time of this recording. And then also a very easy selection. He has led the NFL in touchdown rate over the past two seasons. And on top of it, Hell, there's no Antonio Brown. And if you look at yards per route run, Antonio Brown was still an elite level wide receiver last year. He was an elite level wide receiver two years ago. I I know, obviously, based off of overall volume, based off of so many different factors, people didn't want to view Antonio Brown that way. But his loss in this offense will open up targets for Mike Evans and also Chris Godwin potentially missing the beginning of the season. Mike Evans is a smash here at the 301. There's no reason for these players to be available. This is why I wanted to cheat. I wanted to look smart. And we went with the 101 (laughs) whenever I got to pick my selection. Well, so far, your plan is working. It's it's very well orchestrated, I have to say, Mason. And I completely agree with you. I I think your breakdown of Debo is spot on. Of course, there's going to be some regression in there, especially with the change of quarterback. But at the same time, can he still be that 1A kind of wide receiver? Of course he could. And then Mike Evans, probably the most underappreciated guy that we have every year. He's putting up 1,000 plus yards. Every year he's scoring touchdowns. One more year in the sun for him and Tom Brady together. Sign me up. You just got two number one wide receivers with the best running back in football. That's a pretty good start. Pretty sure Draft Wizard's going to like you. 302, Keaton Allen goes next. 303, Saquon Barkley. Then we have with the fourth pick in the third round, A.J. Brown. Derek Brown, you're up with 10 seconds left on the clock. So I'm a little bit disappointed because my entire queue just got wiped out. Uh, I had Saquon and A.J. Brown at the top of my list. I could go. The Draft Wizard's telling me to go Deontay Johnson or T. Higgins. I'm going to go with Michael Pittman here. And people hearing that I'm taking him over T. Higgins, look, I understand Tegan's had a fantastic season last year, not debating that at all. But Mike Pittman is the unquestioned alpha at the the Indianapolis Colts. He could see similar volume with T. Higgins. He could even eclipse him this year in targets and target share and all those different parts of pieces. So I think the floor is really similar for those two wide receivers. But give me the ceiling with Michael Pittman. All right. Pittman at 305. Mr. BPE, you're up at 306 with 20 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, I mean, I'll just I'll take Higgins. That's fine. And, you know, we're gonna see the Bengals <laughs> pass play. We're gonna see the Bengals throw yep. the ball so much this year with that offensive line upgrade, yeah. like T. Higgins. It's we're gonna we always see two wide receivers from the same team finish as wide receiver ones every single year. And my money's on Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. So as my third receiver, give me T. Higgins. Deontay Johnson, Zeke Elliott, Jalen Waddle, Kyle Pitts, Darren Waller all go. Then it's down to me. Ooh, I was really hoping that maybe just maybe. Uh, Kyle Pitts would make it to me, but unfortunately he did not. So now I've got to figure out the running back position here. Um, there's part of me that really wants to do something just to annoy Andrew Erickson. I kind of yeah. think I'm going to do it here just because I can. Uh, so let's do it. Let's go <laughs> ahead and take Cortland Sutton and uh, we're going to go ahead and just continue to load up on wide receivers. There you go. Take that Erickson. Uh, and look, running backs getting away from me here. So I have two choices. I can either just let it get away from me and just say, eh, to heck with it. I'll take some other guys later. I can take the number one quarterback on the board with Josh Allen. You know what? I think I want to try that and see how it works out. Let's try the zero RB. I hate zero RB. It's not a thing. (laughs) It's called you don't have a plan. 
Uh, I have a plan. We'll see how it works out here. My guess is not very well, but you know what? This is the time to try new things and see how it works out. So I'm going to be brave for everybody. I'm going to start with three wide receivers and Josh Allen and say, here's my football team. Come beat them. And I'll play the waiver wire for running back if I have to. So there you go. Let's go top off the board. Top player. I got the C look. The draft wizard just gave me the muscle because it knows that there's steroids running through my ear right now. So that is very exciting stuff. Uh, let's go with the rest of the picks here in this round. Uh, David Montgomery, Cam Akers, DJ Moore, T- uh, Terry McLaurin goes at the 405. George Kittle, 406 to, uh, what is that, two? That is to Team 6. And then Mr. Big Pot Energy is back up again at 407. Yeah, so I'm in the uh, hashtag dreaded RB dead zone. So it's it's interesting trying to siphon between pick between some of these guys, but there are some running backs in the RB dead zone that I am not shying away from. And this is someone actually tweeted about earlier. He's a hero RB disguised as a dead zone running back, and his, his name is Brees Hall for the New York Jets. Because what we see from the dead zone is the running backs that actually do end up coming out and not destroying your team are the young players. And the players that we just haven't seen it yet from them, not these guys that are are holding on like the Ezekiel Elliott's where the production is all in the past, where Brees Hall, there's a path where he is the three down bell cow for the New York Jets, catches passes, and he's young. And I think it's a great pick, great value here in the fourth round, if I do say so myself. Wait. I was going to say, you better think it's a great pick. You just <laughs> made it. Uh, and you just went from the, uh, what, the danger zone on Twitter the other day to now the RB dead zone. I, I saw you with your Top Gun stuff going on there, Mr. Top Gun. All right, 408, you're up, D-Bro. What do you got for us? Brees Hall to Erickson, the most predictable pick of this entire draft. <laughs> I was like, well, not going to put him in the queue because I know he's going to be gone. Uh, and I'm probably being predictable here. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy that I've called him this year's DeAndre Swift. I want Travis Etienne here uh, to be able to get him in my RB2 spot. Also starting with two really strong wide receivers. I feel good about it. I mean, we have like Andrew Erickson just laid out. The running backs you see come out of this dead zone are the young guys that we haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen it yet out of ETN, and I don't think we're going to see a fully effective and healthy James Robinson. Love ETN's upside. Hey, man, and look, uh, those were the two guys I was considering doubling up at running back. And I'm going to take the guys that really move the needle. Cortland Sutton could end up being a one, so I'm going to take him. I'm going to take Josh Allen, the best quarterback on the planet in fantasy. So let's go. (laughs) Let's go. And I'm just doing this just to stick it to Andrew in this draft. Uh, Let's move on here. So after ATN, Michael Thomas goes, DK Metcalf, Brandon Cooks. So wide receiver run that comes back to you, which is perfect because you already took two wide receivers, Mason. So what do you got next for us? In most drafts that I'm in, like I'm literally 150 drafts into this offseason by now, I'm going wide receivers in this range. But this draft board has been a little unique in that if we're looking at how the running back tiers are breaking down, I think that there are two running backs left over that I probably should just go ahead and take here at the 4-5 turn. I think I'm going to be able to get an elite quarterback later on with Trey Lance to stack up with our guy, Debo Samuel. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take some guaranteed touches from running backs on their rookie contracts. We're going to go get Josh Jacobs as well as J.K. Dobbins. I don't love it. The reason I'm passing on Antonio Gibson here, despite Antonio Gibson being the highest ranked player, according to ADP, is he is currently getting squeezed and touches by Jaden McKissick, who they signed to bring back. And they also drafted Brian Robinson inside the top 100 picks. Antonio Gibson led the NFL in fumbles last year. So I'm slightly concerned with what this coaching staff has in store for him. I have no questions about Jacobs. No questions about J.K. Dobbins. Boring picks, but we'll take him here at the turn. Hey, boring is okay. Now you have three running backs and the two wide receivers. Not a bad way to start that team. Juju Smith-Schuster, Derek Brown's favorite player, goes at 502, followed by Patrick Mahomes at 503. Darno Mooney at 504. More wide receivers continue to fly off the board. And that puts uh, Kenneth Skywalker, also known as Debro, back on the clock for 505. I'm I'm licking my chops. I mean, I've got a top 15 wide receiver <laughs> last year that fell to me at this spot. Mike Williams, I want a lot of exposure Mm -hmm. to Mike Williams this year. I think that there is a reasonable scenario. He outscores Keenan Allen this year. Keenan Allen's efficiency metrics have been declining in each of the last four seasons. Mike Williams is still top of the pile in yards per route run overall, and it gets man coverage top 20 in both of those. So I'm actually making the bet that I think he outscores Keenan Allen. So I'll take the discount. All right, the discounted Mike Williams goes at 5.05 to Debro. That puts Mr. Big Pot Energy Andrew Erickson up at 5.06. I'm going with Marquise Brown, who I think can put mm-hmm. up similar production that Mike Williams did at the beginning of last season, where we were like, is this guy a top three wide receiver? Now, I don't think Marquise Brown is a top three wide receiver, but with no DeAndre Hopkins for the first six weeks, a connection already built in with Kyler Murray, 
Marquise Brown is going to be someone we're ranking ECR every single week until Hopkins comes back as a top 12 guy. I have no doubt in my mind. So give me him in the fifth round. I'll start him until the wheels fall off. Amari Cooper, 507. Jerry Judy, 508. Antonio Gibson, finally, at 509. He almost made it to me. Traylon Burks at 510. And then 511, uh, Chris Godwin goes, which this worked out perfectly because the two running backs I wanted to make it back to me did. A.J. Dillon, staying on brand. Joey P likes to stay on brand and talk about himself in a third person today. So that's right. <laughs> How about the guy who's catching the football? How about the guy who's got uh, incredible goal line upside? How about the fact that Aaron Jones is another year older and you start to see some of the the tread on the tires a little bit take its toll on Andrew, uh, on, excuse me, on Aaron Jones. So all of a sudden, A.J. Dillon to me at 512 is a great value. And then I'm going to take another boring wide receiver who's just going to take every handoff from Mac Jones, and it's Damian Harris. Give me those two guys here. I don't care slight reach. Listen, Draft Wizard, we were just on good terms when you gave me the big, you know, the big bicep curl. Don't tell me slight reach because whether you like him or not, Damian Harris is going to run the football quite a bit. There's an easy handcuff later on if I want to do that. But Damian Harris last year, once again, scored a ton of touchdowns. He's going to score them again. The only reason he didn't score any touchdowns a couple of years ago is because you had silly Cam Newton running the football all the time. It's not going to happen with Mac Jones, just like it didn't happen last year. And this is that last year of his contract there. So, you know, they're going to burn him and turn him. That's what the Patriots do. They never give second contracts to rookies. Hunter Renfro goes next. One of my favorite guys at 602. Then Amon Ross St. Brown at 03. Herbert at 4. Uh, Allen Robinson, 605. That's Matthew Friedman's favorite player. And then 606, Lamar Jackson, right before Big Pod Energy and right before uh, Derek Brown. So Lamar's off the board. 67, Andrew, what are you doing? 10 seconds. Uh, hurt my if heart. This, if this was a best ball draft, I would have picked Kyler Murray to stack him with Marquise Brown. But in a traditional redraft format, I'm going with my QB3, uh, mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts. There you go. Jalen Hurts. <laughs> so so this is what happened now. So I stuck the knife in Erickson. Erickson took it out, <laughs> stuck it in Derek Brown. So Mason, you might want to duck when it comes back to you. Twisted. 606. Derek Brown, what do you got for us, buddy? He put the blade in between my ribs and <laughs> twisted it. Um, I don't know if well, I'm going to recover from that. That's what that but is, yeah. I'm going to try. I'm going to take a guy who's going to be a top 24 wide receiver, get fed a ton of volume. I will happily grab Rashad Bateman here. All right, Rashad Bateman out of my queue onto Derek Brown's team. After Bateman, we have Adam Thielen, Tyler Lockett, and DeAndre Hopkins who uh, I have a workout session with right after this podcast at 611, 612. Mason, you're up on the clock and then starting off the seventh round. What do you got for us? Now, I am about to reach a ton according to ADP, but hell, I, I don't think this ADP is correct. I think that we are going to be finding a wide receiver value, especially in a PPR format, wherever you have over 160 targets, leaving one of the best passing offenses in the NFL. They're going to push the pace of play. The man dropped 202 receiving yards in a single game last year that everybody watched. So, of course, it's going to be priced in. But I think we are going to go ahead and we are going to take Gabriel Davis here at the 612. Nice. I, I'm fine with it. Let's bring it in. And Kyler Murray's great value. I think you can make the argument that Kyler Murray's the pick here. But based on where Lance is stacking up in his ADP, I, I really just want to set myself up to take Trey Lance a little bit later on. So I will pass on the best value in Kyler Murray. And instead, I'm probably actually going to end up going tight end. Yet again, I'm going to reach a little bit. I'm going to go with the tight end that we know is going to be in a top five offense in pace of play, top five offense in pass to run ratio and game neutral scripts. So let's go with Dalton Schultz. You have an injured oh, pick. To start the year. Good pick. And at oh. the same time, I don't think Jalen Tolbert is going to be coming in and taking all those Amari Cooper targets. And Cedric Wilson's gone. There are a ton of targets available in Dallas. The twist here is that Mason actually took the knife out and stabbed me with it. That's that's <laughs> that's what happened. Taking my Dalton Schultz away from me. Kyler Murray goes directly after. So they were listening to you, Mason, and they heard everything you said about Kyler Murray being maybe the right pick. So they took him. Elijah Moore at 703. Joe Burrow at 704. Derek Brown, you're up for 705. <sighs> Dalton Schultz was the top guy in my queue. Um me too. <laughs> yeah. Like how that goes. Um, Time to pivot. On this pick, I'm probably, hmm, there's a lot of few ways that I could go. I mean, looking at the roster, I'm going to go with a guy that actually, like, if the Eagles surprise and passing rate, like I think they will do this year, I'm going to take Devonta Smith here. If I think that Jalen Hurts mm-hmm. not only has a ceiling with his arm, but, but with his legs and his arm, I'll take it. All right, uh, so there you go. Devonta Smith getting uh, selected in the fifth pick in the seventh round. The sixth pick in the seventh is Andrew Erickson. So what are you doing with it? Oh, man, there's a lot of things I could do here. And 
I don't like I don't like the board right now. I don't like the board. I'm, no one is screaming out to me saying, Andrew, it's me. <laughs> this is just it's the total opposite of that. So I'm relying on my rankings. And I guess uh, begrudgingly, I guess I'll select uh, Edwards Hilaire because I have to draft a running. Back. Oh, man, I could feel the pain in that selection. That was. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that was I, I just, it's so it, exciting. It, it, you OK? It, it's one of those rounds where you're kind of looking. Do you want like, me to pause man, the draft? No, nah, I mean, I'll <laughs> all right. Uh, after uh, you begrudgingly selected Clyde Edwards, a we had Robert Woods, TJ Hawkinson, Eli Mitchell, uh, Drake London and Cordero Patterson go off the board. Uh, so now for me looking around uh, once again, it's PPR. So Kareem Hunt is on the board. I mean, that's a kind of an interesting selection right here. Uh, the the bots want me to take Miles Sanders, which is never happening. That's not happening at all. Uh, not ever. I'm sorry, Draft Wizard. So I'm going to take Kareem Hunt, back myself up with another running back here just to give myself some depth at that position, which I desperately need. And because it's PPR, I can get away with, again, some of these other kind of style backs necessarily. Uh, the other backs on the, on the board right now, Devin Singletary, Tony Pollard, all kind of interesting. Tight end just kind of got obliterated. Um, in the last round or so. So uh, Christian Kirk is intriguing on this board. The other wide receivers, Brandon Ayuk, Chase Claypool, Kadarius Tony, not my favorite bunch. So once again, kind of like Andrew Erickson, not feeling it, bro. I'm not super excited about this group of guys. So what I'm going to do is take another running back and just kind of just cover myself. I'm going to go look for big offenses because I've been here with Andrew Erickson every single day of my life, listening and talk about offensive ecosystems. So the Buffalo Bills have a pretty good one. And until James Cook really takes over this role at some point, I think Singletary is still going to be that guy. So give me Singletary. So now I've got my four running backs. I got my three wides. I got Josh Allen. I've got to start because I still like some of the depth later on at the uh, wide receiver. Then we have Dak Prescott going next, followed by Tom Brady. Little QB run happening. Garrett Wilson, Russell Wilson, Christian Kirk, not named Wilson. Back to you, uh, Andrew Erickson for 507. Oh, excuse All me, right. 807. My apologies. 807. I'm going to go with the other Bills running back here in James Cook. Look, we don't know how the backfield is going to shake out. This is one of these ambiguous backfield situations where you look at their ADP. It's going right back to back. But something I've been trying to press into a lot of my written articles is draft the Bills running back because we saw Devin Singletary down the stretch last year, RB3 in PPR. So if that's James Cook for the Bills in 2022, you're going to be thrilled. If it's Singletary, Joe, you're going to be thrilled. But either way, you're getting them in the round eight plus. I think that you always want to draft the Bills running back. I think that's a good thing. And luckily I did. I listened to you and I hopefully drafted the right one. That's the question. Derek Brown, 25 seconds on the clock for the eighth pick in the eighth round. So there's a few different ways I could go. Um, I feel pretty good about my wide receiver room. Um, I think I'm probably going to go ahead and take a bit of a reach because I want the upside here. Um, I'm going to hurt uh, the fantasy flocks wings with this one. I'm going to take Trey Lance. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if they're going to fly to the top of the draft here. <laughs> oh, so you've uh, you've taken the Trey Lance here at 808. Chase Edmonds goes next at 809. I was looking long and hard at him, but I don't know. Now I'm starting to get all all wishy-washy about those Dolphins running backs. Brandon Ayuk at 810, Miles Sanders at 811. See, Draft Wizard, I told you nobody wants him. Uh, that comes up <laughs> next at 812. Uh, Mason Dodd, you're up for two picks. Dear God, like... My entire queue, what you were talking about earlier. I mean, I was looking at Lance, Edmonds. I was even thinking, oh, okay, if Sanders somehow makes it here, I, I guess we're taking Miles Sanders. I was looking at Brandon Ayuk. I had all those guys start up. Now that is wiped away. And if you found yourself in this position, I think the worst thing you could do is go, okay, well, we need to reach on a quarterback. We are the last team here sitting without one. But because we are the last team sitting without a quarterback, what that means is you can't really take another. I think mm. that we are going to get some quarterback values deep. making it to us. You still have Derek Carr, you still have Matthew Stafford. You still have Aaron Rodgers. Hopefully one of those guys will make it back around. So we're going to just take some shots on some upside picks here. I think the first pick in Kenneth Walker makes a lot of sense. This is a player that was selected at the very top end of the second round in an offense that wants to run the ball over and over again. Rashad Penny, love the man. He's never stayed healthy outside of a six-game stretch at the very end of this past season. And outside of that, there are... Maybe I want to just go down the direction of Russell Gage. Look at that $30 million contract. But you know what? Yep. I'm going to take best player available. I'll just go through and I'll take Tony Pollard. And taking All him right. as our running back five here, we've drafted way, way, way too many running backs. Usually I'm wide receiver heavy. But 
it is what it is. We'll just take a swing that maybe he is a running back one if Ezekiel Elliott were to go down. We're we're gonna after this draft is over, you're gonna be on the uh, on the horn to a lot of different teams trying to move some of those running backs. I can tell right now. But look, exactly. you you brought up a great point, which is you're here to draft talent. That's what the draft is for. Stay disciplined. None of these quarterbacks are moving the needle, quote unquote. So why would you reach for one now when you could build depth somewhere else and get guys in your roster that might be more valuable to somebody else? And you're still going to get at least one or two of those quarterbacks later, maybe two of them. You still have plenty of time. I think you just had a great. Uh, situation there where you showed about being disciplined during a draft and taking the talent on the board. Zach Ertz, 902, Claypool at 903, Michael Carter, 904, Debro, 10 seconds for 905. So my wide receiver room looks really good right now. Um, I think if I'm going to go best player available, I'm going to take the upside shot on a guy that I love, Russell Gage. Okay, Send him over here. Good. I'm not surprised. Well, apparently I didn't get Russell nope. Gage. Oh, you waited too long. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'll take him out it's of my queue. Ramondre I mean, Stevenson. Ramondre. He was at the top of my list. I was debating Stevenson. between the two of those. So you got to love the timeout. But I'll happily take Ramondre Stevenson with all the rumors out of New England coming out that he is going to be involved. They're working him in on third downs. We don't know what's up with James White. We talked about this previously. I really I think that there is a range of outcomes where he takes over the goal line and some of the early down work for Damian Harris. So I know I timed out, but he was I mean, I was debating back and forth between these two players. It's OK. It happens to the best of us. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson goes to you, uh, unfortunately or fortunately. Then uh, Andrew Erickson, you took a, a running back as well. Why don't you talk to us about him? Uh, Melvin Gordon at the 906. All indications are that he's still going to be involved in the Broncos offense. We've seen Nathaniel Hackett operate a two man system from his days in Green Bay. And contrary to popular belief, Melvin Gordon is not washed. Uh, actually, really good and productive last year. RB18, one spot behind Javante Williams. So they're differing ADPs where Javante costs a top three pick versus Melvin Gordon, you can get in the ninth round when he could easily still be the goal line back in this high-flying Broncos offense. Yeah, give me the discount with Melvin Gordon. All right, Melvin Gordon, 906, and Naheem Hines at 907. Boy, oh boy, is he getting talked up. 908, Rashad Penny, uh, Damian Pierce at 909, Michael Gallup at 910, Devontae Parker at 911. I got to tell you, I'm really happy how things are falling to me. That's why I love drafting at the turn. You just wait, let everybody make their picks, and then you take what shouldn't be there anymore. That's your job. I'm going to take Alan Lazard. He shouldn't be there anymore. Uh, and then I have a choice here to make. I could take the upside fun of Chris Olave or Russell Gage and try to be a good sport and let <laughs> Derek Brown take him here. Oh, what to do? What to, I feel like either way I'm going to upset Derek. So that's a win for me because he is a Saints fan. I know he loves Olave too. So this is tough. Erickson, what do you think here? Should I go with Olave? Should I go with Gage? Keep it simple? Or should I kind of go fancy? What are your thoughts? Come Erickson? on, let's let let's see if Gage, let's see if we can get Gage past team 11, team 10, team 9, team 8, and team 7, and me. <sighs> and you, oh, and you. There's yeah, the caveat. That's the problem. There we the go. And you feels like Erickson making that pick, but you know what? Yeah, I'm going to no, take that, the That's all this. Is. This is dramatic foreshadowing, off. okay? That's all so it give is. Give me the younger dude. Give me Olave. Kadarius Tony goes right after. Christian Watson goes next. Then uh, Ronald Jones, 1004. Sky Moore, 1005, who was also my cue. I thought I could get fancy and wait one more round. I did not. Uh, could not do that. Uh, then JD McKissick at 1006. Erickson, you're up for 1007. Oh, and Gage is out Russell there. Gage is still on the board. And me. No, oh, no. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to take <laughs> Russell Gage. I, I get the upside of him, and I, but I don't really need him with my roster construction. You know, he's someone that you're looking to use in the beginning of the season, but I kind of have Marquise Brown kind of penciled in as that player that I need to kind of pivot off of as I get down later down the line. So uh, for me, I'm going to go with a tight end who I think has kind of fallen significantly here and stack him with my mm -hmm. quarterback in Jalen Hurts. So I'm going to go with uh, Dallas Goddard. I think that Right now, like he usually goes in the middle round. So to see him now available mm -hmm. as now a late round tight end, I see the value with Dallas Goddard. So I'm going to go with him here. All right. Uh, not surprised there. Dallas Goddard goes, hey, 1008. You want to take Russell Gage here, Derek? Oh, look at that. Well, all right. Um, Yeah. Come on, Russell Gage. Come Let's over see. to the squad. Uh, for all the reasons that Mason talked about. Right. We know that Tampa Bay can support a lot of wide receivers in this offense. Pace of play is there. Passing rates are there. So, yeah, I mean, we talked about this on the hot take episode, Joe. I said Russell Gage mm -hmm. could be a top 15 wide receiver. Still with that. Not impossible. Kenny Galladay, 10 9 Jacoby Myers at 10 10 Isaiah Spiller, one of our collective favorites at 10 11 That's a nice value there. 10 12 
You are up. Mason Dodd, make your pick. I assume not a running back. Exactly. This is why we decided to go with the running backs with Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard. You see what, like 12 of these guys off the board by the time we get to our next, whereas everybody has a quarterback. So trust me, I, I still wish we could go back in the time machine somehow, some way, get Trey Lance on this team. But I will accept the second place trophy. Instead, we will take Matthew Stafford at the 10-12. And now the wide receiver room is dried up and we are sitting with legitimately only three guys, Debo Samuel, Mike Evans, and Gabriel Davis. But those are three players I expect to do quite well this season. And we are going to go with someone that is locked in as the fourth option in his offense, which sounds horrible. I mean, behind Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Joe Mixon. But the concentration for targets in Cincinnati, ridiculous. Like, let me pull this up mm-hmm. just to make sure I'm not completely off here. But outside of those three wide receivers this past year, can you all take a guess on how many targets went to other wide receivers in this offense? Uh, I uh, Hardly any, and the rest went to Yuzuma. <laughs> Literally 27 <laughs> targets through 17 yeah. weeks. And T. Higgins missed yeah. two games. Like, T. Yeah. Higgins is definitely a tier above, but the concentration for targets are there. This is going to be a team that's a lot better. They can push the pace of play as well compared to where they were at last season with the upgraded offensive line. So I'm not too excited about it, but we will go Tyler Boyd at the 1101. All right, Tyler Boyd 1101, Jarvis Landry 1102, Jahan Dotson 1103. My boy, oh Williams in Detroit goes 1104. Jameson Williams off the board. Another one of my guys out of my queue. Ah, oh, very frustrated about that. Derek Brown, you're up for 1105. All right, well, it's time to address the tight end position. And if you're going to wait <laughs> yeah, until the late you. rounds, uh, I mean, it, we know that like there's a handful of guys that I love in these later rounds. It's Cole Komet, it's Big Irv, and it's going to be David and Joku. I'm going to go ahead and select Cole Komet here. Uh, Mason was talking about just the hierarchy of targets. Like, Chicago, he's going to be fighting with Darnell Mooney for the target lead on that team. So over 100 targets, we see him actually score a touchdown this year. And... He's got top 10, top eight upside. Like it's, it could definitely happen if Komet set, takes another step forward this year. Yep. That was the last guy that I felt like I could take him and feel comfortable. Now I am super uncomfortable. Thanks a lot, Derek. 11 06. Andrew Erickson, you're up for the next pick. Yeah. So I feel pretty strong about the receivers on my roster. So I'm not going to necessarily backfill the bench with just more receivers that are never going to see the light of day. As long as I have, you know, all my studs, like I'm not going to find a guy at the waiver wire that's going to replace Jefferson Diggs, or Higgins anytime soon. So I'm going to just get running backs and Alexander Madison sitting there. I think that he's such a screaming mm. value versus a guy like Tony Pollard. who you have to draft so much, to, so much higher on when Madison has actually shown that he can handle 30 plus touches in an actual game. He smashed five times over the last two years. When Dalvin cook misses games, Dalvin cook misses games every single year. Ezekiel Elliott has missed one game because of health in six years in the NFL. So for me, Alexander Madison is just, he's the best handcuff in my opinion. All right. Uh, Madison, excellent value there. Uh, Rondell Moore goes 1107. He was in my queue. He's gone. James Robinson gone. Daryl Henderson, Raheem Mostert, Marquez Valdez Scantling. Uh, look, you know, I love Toe Tap Pat. Pat Fryermuth is just a good player. And you know what? Whoever's playing quarterback for the Steelers, probably Kenny Pickett. I do think Pat Fryermuth can still be useful. So I'm going to go ahead and take him again. You know, I don't love it, but I do need the tight end. It's giving me a steal. It's giving me three claps. I really, it's more like one and a half claps. So I just want to put that in perspective. So once again, we're talking about depth here and either looking at wide receiver depth or running back depth. And I got to say, not in love with the wide receivers that are remaining here. I'm glad I did what I did when I did it. And that's uh, that's actually the title of my autobiography that's coming out uh, pretty soon. Uh, another guy who's out here that, again, just going to kind of I'm spending all this quality time with these two smart gentlemen, three when you add in Mason, obviously, of course. Um, and I've heard a lot about this. So I'm going to go ahead and take another shot here on Sony Michelle. Maybe he is that guy in Miami because the best running back by committee pick you can make is the last one, potentially, because it doesn't cost you anything to find out. Deshaun Watson goes next at 12.02. 12.03 is Palmer, then Crowder at 12.04. Odell Beckham, who was also kind of in my consideration at 12.05. Uh, 12.06, DJ Chark up. And then next we have uh, Andrew Erickson back on the clock for the seventh pick in the 12th round. So this is the range I kind of want to take some shots on some potential breakout running backs. And something that I've kind of found through my research is that you want to attract guys that have that pass catching element to their game. So 
the best pass catching running back in this class, in my opinion, outside James Cook, who I already have on my roster, is Rashad White and Leonard Fournette mm-hmm. now coming in. You know, Big Mac Leonard Fournette coming in way overweight at a camp. Uh, yeah, if he eats himself into Fat Lenny, then Rashad White's going to be a steal. <laughs> so I'm going to go with uh, Rashad White. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard, you could follow him at Twitter. <laughs> uh, at Andrew Erickson underscore, just so you know, you go directly to him to have that conversation, Lenny. I love you. I think you're great. I've always been a big supporter. Uh, next here is, uh, of course, Derek Brown with the eighth pick in the 12th round. Derek, who are you taking here? Well, top of the queue was Rashad White. Um, I'm not going to yeah, sit here and make, it, make, I'm not going to make fun of, of Chubby Lynn anymore. Um, but I'm going to sit here and go back to the tight end position. If we're going to play matchups, if it's not Cole Komet that I talked about breaking out, then I'm going to sit here and make a bet on Irv Smith. Adam Thielen, another oh, okay. year older. The Vikings are talking about a new look offense. So they throw a lot. Pace is kind of up better than it was last year. Irv Smith takes another step forward. He could be the number two in this offense. All right. So Irv Smith, another interesting pick there uh, by the boys. Considering on, you have Dawson Knox, another tight end going. Then Rob Gronkowski, another tight end. And then Noah Fant, another tight end. Fantasy Flock Network is up next. Mason Dodd, you're on the clock for two. The first in the 13th and the last of the 12th. Definitely running back. Best available on the board right now. I- I'm boxed out of it. I can't do anything. Our hands are tied. So we're going to have to go through. We're going to have to take a wide receiver. If we're taking a wide receiver in this range of the draft, I want to take someone that I can easily cut say by the time we get to week four, if he's not <laughs> producing for a waiver wire option. So we're going to take a swing for some upside. We're going to go George Pickens. Like really what's the ultimate ceiling for someone like Corey Davis. I'm taking Corey Davis and he's just going to sit on my bench throughout the entire season. I'm never going to be able to cut him. I think we will know exactly what we have with George Pickens, not exactly what we have with Pickens, but we should have an idea if he's going to have a role at least through the first month of the season. And then I wasn't expecting this when we go Dalton Schultz of the 701. I mean, if I could go back in time, I'm definitely taking Drake London there instead. I didn't know tight ends would be making it this far down. But let's just go ahead and let's just take Mike Gusecki at the 1301. I think it's great value. I think he has a better shot of actually making an impact on our roster than anybody else in this range. All right. Well done there. After Gusecki goes, James White, Kenneth Gainwell, uh, Jamal Williams at 1304. 1305, Derek Brown, you're on the clock. I'm going to backfill these last two roster spots that I have. I'm going to backfill with some running backs and a guy that is buried in ADP right now. I don't agree with it. You can go check the ranks because I'm not telling you any lies. Being transparent with this, people, he could walk out with the starters role in this offense, which we think is going to score a lot. Give me Tyrion Davis Price. There's your boy. You always get your man. Davis He's Price. He's so goes late here. here. Like, I know why but people. Hey, it's uh, this is what it is, you know, and, and watch. It'll be somebody else we've never even heard of showing up there. Undrafted free agent guy. <laughs> Thank Jordan you, Mason. Kyle Shanahan. Thank you for ruining fantasy football drafts since 2017. <laughs> All right. Uh, Big Pot Energy, you're up next. 1306. <laughs> All right. I would usually go running back here, but this receiver in particular has been, you know, the has been catching my eye because, you know, if, if it's not in the in the simulations, we could run in Denver. You know, if it's not Cortland Sutton, if it's not Jerry Judy, then then who's left? Uh, the other big body wide receiver they have on the outside. Uh, his, his name is Tim Patrick. So in the 13th round, I'll take a shot on Tim Patrick, who I think is actually going to be the starter on the outside opposite Cortland Sutton. So to get Tim Patrick here versus Jerry Judy, we have to get in the round six or seven. Uh, I think Tim Patrick's going to be a screaming value. All right. Screaming value for Tim Patrick, Gus Edwards, 1307. Uh, Tyler Algier, 1308, out of my Q, Marlon Mack, 1309, 1310. You got Chuba Hubbard, then Khalil Herbert, also my Q at 1311. They are all gone. So what's a boy to do? Uh, well, if I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the big time uh, quarterback, I might as well be the first person to take the big time defense off the board, too. So let's go with the Bills defense and I'll start that here. And I'm going to take David Njoku as my other tight end, just in case Pat Fryermuth doesn't work out. So Njoku is going to cover me at tight end, give myself a little bit of depth there at the position. Then Sterling Shepard goes next. Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers, Tampa defense goes. Albert O at 1406. So unfortunately, we don't get to hear Derek uh, <laughs> Derrickson. I was going to say Erickson make uh get to say alberto's full name because i know he loves to do that so andrew if you want you could say it and then make your pick it's up to you uh albert okoye there you Thank go you. i love when you say it makes me just tingly inside <laughs> hey you gotta so put good. some respect on the guy's name you know everyone's been just you know hey i'm gonna take the easy way out and call him alberto but hey you know he's got a family too i think he has kids maybe. he does maybe i'm not sure 
I don't Maybe. know if he's, if he's 23, <laughs> we're still not sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, side choke. Oh, all right, go ahead. Um, make your pick. All right. I'm just going to pick a defense and then just leave my last pick for a, a skill player. So I'm just going to go with the, the Colts defense here. All right. Colts defense off the board. Uh, Derek Brown, 1408. What's the pick? Uh, I, I can't pull myself to take a defense um, <laughs> outside of the last <laughs> round. So this is this is an oldie, but a goodie. Um, it, look, it might not be sexy, but we still don't know what happens with Alvin Kamara coming up this season. Mm -hmm. I know that all in dynasty circles, Abram Smith is the hot talk and everybody wants to stash him and stuff. Old man Mark Ingram could still get volume. And if Alvin Kamara misses time, that's the starter in, in New Orleans. So I'll backfill my roster to another running back. Backfill in the roster. There you go. Mark Ingram, the old man, finds a home. Robert Tunyon up next, then Chris Carson at 410. All the old guys, 411, Corey Davis. Mason, you're on the clock for the last pick of the 14th and the first of the 15th. One of these picks is easy. We got to grab a defense. 49ers, great defensive unit overall. And what you always want to do, at least what I always want to do when we're taking defenses, is look at the beginning of the season for their schedule because eventually I'm probably going to end up streaming the position. And if you look at the 49ers schedule, they go up against Justin Fields week one. I'm not a big Justin Fields fan. And then they go up against Drew Locke week two. If we think it's Drew Locke against the Seattle Seahawks. So it's a combination of, A, we like the overall unit. And B, it's a very good schedule. So we will go with the 49ers there at the very end. And if we're looking at wide receiver, should I should I take David Bell? You know what? What I would actually probably do, if this is a real league, obviously it's not going to make my team look pretty at the end. But if it's a real league, I'm taking Dante Foreman here and I'm saying, okay, mm -hmm. we need to cut week one. We need someone to cut. If Christian McCaffrey goes down before the season starts, which is unlikely, but the odds are above zero. Hell, maybe all of a sudden we have a nice trade piece. There you go. Derek Brown's going to be on the phone with you in week one, I'm sure, uh, after McCaffrey goes down. All right, next year, <laughs> speed dial, baby. Denver at 15.02, then 15.03 in the Chargers. Kansas City Chiefs at 15.04. Derek Brown, you're on the clock. Well, um, I'm unfortunately going to have to take a defense here. Um, I'll go ahead and take the Rams. Uh, Resigning Aaron Donald, we know this team is going to get pressure after the quarterback. We know that the secondary is good with Jalen Ramsey, so... Just go ahead and take one of the best defenses off the board. I mean, it was between them and the Ravens and maybe maybe the Patriots. I think they have a bounce back year as far as mm -hmm. defensive wise. But yeah, I'll go with the top one on the board. All right. So the uh, the Rams, the defending champs go off the board. Andrew Erickson, you're up next on the clock. All right. So I'm looking for a player that I think can hit the ground running even as a first year guy. So I'm going to go with Jalen Tobert for the Dallas Cowboys because he has an opportunity with Michael Gallup potentially not being ready for week one. Jalen Tolbert could go out and have 100 yards in his first game. Like that's totally in the range of outcomes if he's on the starting lineup opposite CeeDee Lamb. So I think Jalen Tolbert, at least I'm going to know I'm going to get with him. And if he sucks, he's playing behind James Washington. Like our guest has alluded to, like I can just cut him and move on. Could just cut him and move on. That's right. Nobody, nobody lasts too long for Andrew Erickson these days. All right. Uh, now it's down to me here after Tolbert, the Saints, David Bell, the Patriots, Miami and Baltimore go. One of my favorite guys on the board, KJ Osborne, still out there. I think he has a lot of value. Alec Pierce still has a lot of value. Kendrick Bourne could still be decent. Van Jefferson. But you know what? I'm going to go old and boring here, too, with Marvin Jones, because I'm still not exactly sure. Uh, who anybody is over there who could be on the Jacksonville Jaguars. So let's take Marvin Jones and hope for some better game planning and see what happens. I got a B. Thank you, Draft Wizard. I would thought with all the uh, artificial substances running through my uh, body right now, it would have been higher than that. But that's okay. We'll take the 85 out of 100. Uh, and we will go ahead and look at the projected standings. Derek Brown, what grade did you get on this draft? I, I'm so happy, guys. This is the first one I haven't gotten a D or an F on. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, at you. I got a B Who's minus. A uh, I'm yeah. so happy. So happy. So what's my reward? <laughs> I get a cookie. Like, I mean, I actually got above a C. I'm cookie. so happy. You get, back to, you get to keep your job. Yeah, you get to keep oh, your job, good. job and come back that's for the nice. show next week. I think that's what happens. Uh, Andrew Erickson, how about you? What grade did the draft wizard give you? I also got a B, but I got an 86 out of 100. So I bested you by one mm. point, Joe. Yes, one point. Uh, now, speaking of bested, uh, the new guy, Mason Dodd, came in here and just schooled everybody. Uh, the team of a thousand running backs 
won this draft, according to the draft wizard. So Mason Dodd, I can only assume you got an A plus here or an A or something like that. Yeah, I got 95 out of 100. I will admit, though, if we're just looking at the rosters, Andrew is a better roster than me. I mean, based on how that wide receiver no, run happened in the middle Don't round encourage here, Andrew. I, don't I think do I'm that. just throwing out the raid. Head the energy now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you think that? Why do you think that Andrew's roster, what it was it you like about the big pot energy roster? I mean, going through, if we're just talking about how we're going to turn these rosters at the beginning of the season, it's going to be a lot easier to find that actual pickup coming from the running back position rather than wide receiver. Like how many years have we actually seen a wide receiver come from the waiver wire week one, week two to turn into a league winner where two years ago, you get James Robinson. Last year, you get Elijah Mitchell. So usually I prefer building around wide receiver. I prefer grabbing an elite level tight end. I think the mistake I made with this draft, not understanding that we are going to get some crazy value on guys later on, like Mike Gusecki, could have passed on Dalton Schultz in the middle round to go favor the wide receiver. But you you live and you learn. I don't know. Mason, I I think taking Dalton Schultz in the sure thing there is a pretty good move uh, because maybe it's Tolbert. You know, maybe eventually Michael Gallup comes back healthy. But, I mean, Dalton Schultz has been out there proving it. I, I think you stand by the Dalton Schultz pick. I, I I think all of us had him in the queue. We were all ready to take him the yeah. round you did. You just took him first. So I, I stand by. I support your decision. Uh, damn the torpedoes. Uh, for me, I really did like my draft until I looked at more of the insights and said that Mike Mayer of Fantasy Pros liked it more than anybody else. So automatically, I've got to go back to the drawing board. Uh, <laughs> it says also that Liz Loza, my dear friend, like uh, this draft as well. She gave me an A. That's all that matters. And I gave me an A because Joey P loves him. Some Joey P here, obviously. Actually, I gave myself an A (laughs) minus because I always want to give myself a little something to shoot for. Uh, As far as people didn't like my draft, Dave Richard, Dave and I always have very different drafts. He gave me a D plus. So I'm not surprised at that at all. Uh, Derek Brown, any expert opinions you'd like to share about your draft? Uh, Well, I gave myself a 98. It feels good. Uh, It's like a warm blanket. (laughs) Um, so I'm going to take that to the bank. Um, it's nice to see, uh, Dalton Del Don gave me a 98 as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. You're welcome. Um, apparently we're on the same boat, Joe. Uh, Dave Richard gave me a 67. Uh, Scott Engel, who has not liked a lot of my drafts, gave me a 68 and Scott Pianowski gave me a 70. So, eh, I mean, I feel good with this team. I feel like, uh, Got two to three starting running backs, took some upside late. I feel really good about my wide receivers with Pittman and Bateman both giving me both a floor and an upside with this team. So, I mean, overall, I know I drafted it. I gave myself a 98, but I like the roster. (laughs) Everyone loves their own brand. Well, we might as well run through the (laughs) roster since you basically halfway did it. Trey Lance is your quarterback. Christian McCaffrey is your RB1. So there's a chance you have a top five running back and top five quarterback. That's pretty good. Your other running back right now, Travis Etienne, is the RB2. You have CeeDee Lamb, Michael Pittman, Mike Williams, Cole Komet, Rashad Bateman. That ain't too shabby, my friend. I like this team, too. I don't know what I gave you, but I'm giving you at least a 90 in this, no matter what it says. Los Angeles Rams, the D. The bench is Devontae Smith, Ramondre Stevenson, Russell Gage, Irv Smith Jr., Mark Ingram, and your boy TDP, Tyrion David Price, which we're not going to call him TDP, I think. Uh, so, hey, look, I see the the merit in this roster. I really like what you did here, and you have some good uh, – depth there wide receiver Devontae Smith and Russell Gage two guys I think you can feel really good about so when you step back and you look at this whole roster what's the takeaway I uh, I mean one it hurts the fact that I and Mason's kind of said he wouldn't have taken Dalton Schultz if you didn't do it I was gonna do it so I love that pick I wish I would have gotten him who as a player that I I believe has top three tight end upside this year I don't think we see a fully effective Michael Gallup so Wish I would have gotten him there. Um, if anything, maybe I could have snuck another running back in here earlier uh, to give myself, you know, where if Travis Etienne's, uh, he looks good. All the camp reports are good. Think the foot's going to be fine, obviously, because I took him as early as I did. But mm-hmm. if there was anything that I would do different with this roster is maybe pad the running back room a little bit more in case Etienne falls off. But I mean, right now, this is kind of what you do with Hero RB. Like, if you get one of these guys, you're just kind of like, okay, this team is going to be good if Christian McCaffrey is really good. So then it's, okay, let's just piece together RB2 in the Flex Weekly. All right, sounds good. So if CMC stays healthy, be a very, very happy person with this team. All right, Andrew Erickson, why don't you share uh, some of the expert opinions about your draft, not named Mason Dodd, and then we can uh, take apart your roster for a sec. Yeah, so I gave myself a 98 out of 100, so right on brand. Jeff Bell mm-hmm. from Football Guys liked my draft, 97 out of 100. Drew DeLuca, 
from the QB list. So I think a lot of them are just highlighting the fact that I got Stephon Diggs and T Higgins. And I just think that I got both <laughs> those guys a lot later than I've seen. I mean, Stephon Diggs in the middle of the second round in a full point PPR. I wanted to, I was actually curious, Joe, cause you could have taken Diggs with one of your t- two picks, but you chose Adams and Jamar Chase. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, why are you so, so why Adams over Diggs? Uh, look, I think that Adams has been trying to get out of there for a while, it seems like. And, you know, the rapport is going to be there. You know, the trust level is going to be there. I just feel like Adams is going to have a unique opportunity to just kind of pick up what he's done in Green Bay and basically transfer it over. And, and look, Aaron Rodgers is a Hall of Fame quarterback, but let's not, you know, go crazy about the last couple of years of Aaron Rodgers because it's been incredibly efficient. And I think Derek Carr has shown you, you know, last year with how many yards he could throw for and that he's getting more confident. And all of a sudden, I think the confidence boost of having that true number one wide receiver is huge for Derek Carr. And not only that, who that specific guy is, is somebody that he trusts from college. And that's a big deal to me. Uh, look, I think Diggs, I was planning on taking Adams and Diggs. It was basically splitting hairs there between Adams and, and Diggs at that okay. at last time, because if you're going to give me Jamar chase, I'm going to take yeah, him yeah, obviously yeah. first. I, but, I get the chase, but over, yeah, over the they are, they're very Adams and Diggs are very close to me. I am kind of concerned that last year, just a tad, it got found out a little bit, you know, two years ago, everything was to Diggs, And then this year, everybody was more ready for it and prepared. So the numbers did come down a little bit. And I do think Gabriel Davis can take a, a step forward. And if that's the case, maybe a little bit more balance in terms of how things get spread out. So that's, that's the one thing Whereas I think Adams is the new toy. Adams is going to get all the play. That's kind of my take. Are you concerned about your running backs though? Brees Hall and uh, Kyle was because Edwards Alaire, you know, really a tough sell, I think, for a lot of us, you included. And then Brees <laughs> yeah, Hall, <right. laughs> a running back on the Jets. It is the Jets. I know it's a r- young running back. You have Melvin Gordon, James Cook, Alexander Madison, Rashad White. So you have other options. But outside of Melvin Gordon, I mean, some of those options also have question marks as well. Well, that's the move behind, you know, waiting at running back. So I tried to hit it with, it with numbers. You know, if you can't get quality, okay, then you need to approach the position with quantity. It's like, all right, that's why I took a bunch of shots on some guys that have paths to receiving like that's kind of what i was looking at with Brees hall so yeah the jets offense maybe it's not that great but is Brees hall operating on third down is he catching passes out of the backfield as the jets try to rally from behind like that's an out that he gives and that can help make up especially in a ppr format where touchdowns are weighed less so the better offenses aren't necessarily supporting as great as fantasy assets because the quote-unquote like volume kings garbage time is more available to some of these running backs that are using the passing game now if, if Brees hall doesn't you know, take on that role, then okay. But that's where I'm betting him getting him in the fourth round. Because if we knew he was going to come in and have a Najee Harris S workload, he would be a second round pick. And I look at running backs in the dead zone of the ones I want. I think about how, okay, when we're ranking this guy next year, you know, no matter what Ezekiel Elliott does this year, there's no way he's going to be ranked as a second round pick next year. It's impossible. But Brees Hall, yeah, we could all see a scenario where what he does his rookie year, we're not talking about him as a top, or a top two pick in terms of 2023 fantasy football drafts with Zeke, with David Montgomery. Like that's not happening with those guys. Like we know who those guys are at this point. Brees Hall um, is it more of a wild card. So I'm willing to take the risk on him. Edward Solaire, I guess I'm trying to buy more into the fact that he had the gallbladder issue. They really haven't, I'm not exactly enthralled by the Ronald Jones and he was a pass catcher at the college level. Like it hasn't really come to fruition at all yet. I know I've talked about my love for Derek Gore. And I should have drafted Derek Gore with my last pick just in case ever to layer you know, <laughs> Stay flames on brand. out. But I mean, right now he is pegged in as a starter and he plays on the Chiefs. So again, yo, it used to cost a, an arm and a leg mm-hmm. to get Edwards Lair, and now it doesn't. So I thought that the value at least there, and I said it, I was kind of begrudgingly because I don't love Edwards Lair as a player necessarily, but the situation's pretty good and I didn't have to pay so so much to get him. I love Hertz with Diggs and Jefferson. That's a tremendous grouping. All right, let's go over to you, Mason Dodd. Oh, look, I think it worked out. You waited on QB. You didn't get Trey Lance. Poor kid. You got Matthew Stafford, consolation prize. I mean, that's pretty good. I think mm-hmm. you can live with that. Somehow you'll make it through. Jonathan Taylor, the 1-1. One, one. Then you had Josh Jacobs. The wide receiver room looks like Debo Samuel, Mike Evans, Gabriel Davis, and Dalton Schultz at tight end. Then you have J.K. Dobbins at the flex, San Francisco 49ers D. Tony Pollard on the bench with Ken Walker, Mike Gusecki, Tyler Boyd, Dante Foreman, and George Pickens. So they have graded you one overall. Talk to us about the roster and and maybe some of the expert opinions you might have gotten as well. Yeah, overall, I think the roster 
Definitely has a high floor. I, I would just argue that maybe the ceiling's not there for this team to improve that much throughout the season in moves that we could make. I mean, yes, in theory, like we could go through and we could look to trade one of these running backs away. And I do think that if we're looking at the range of outcomes for someone like Kenneth Walker, for someone like Tony Pollard, it's entirely possible that they put up running back one finishes. Now, of course, you're going to need some opportunity swinging in their direction, most likely with an injury. But if it were a league where we could go through and we could trade guys and then all of a sudden say Kenneth Walker breaks out week four, he's sitting on our bench and we're able to move Kenneth Walker for someone like Jerry Judy. I know you all are saying that Jerry Judy's not one of your guys, but I will say Jerry Judy's four years younger than Cortland Sutton. And he's one of my guys. Don't loop me in with these two. I'm with you, dude. <laughs> Don't loop me in. I just took Sutton. Look, I'm taking Sutton really to 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 skewer Erickson a little bit, but it's nice to hear somebody else on the Judy side. So talk to oh, him. Hey, can talk. I can I get my Judy take off real quick? Because I got a Let, battle back. Yes, I, I've been sitting here with my lips. If y'all look at the splits in games where Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton has played together, Jerry Judy is almost four years younger than him. Cortland Sutton's averaged 4.5 points per game over an 11 game sample with where they have played together. And yeah, Jerry Judy had the same exact quarterback play. Jerry Judy almost doubled the man on a points per game basis, had more targets per game. The only thing that you're seeing Sutton beat him out with is dot and air yards, which yeah, air, air yards are going to be predictable season to season. I get that. But to assume that Cortland Sutton going into his age 27 season, who has never posted a top 24 wide receiver finish on a per game basis, all of a sudden is the wide receiver one over Jerry. I can't get there. I know every smart person on the planet is. That's why I'm just having to go through and try to find someone to back me up on this one. Uh, you found your your muse. You found your person. You, you had me at four years younger. Uh, yeah, look, it's look, I like both of the players and I, I used I liked Cortland Sutton quite a bit, too. And I was a big Cortland. Like I had him on a lot of championship teams a few years ago, but I, I do think we shouldn't forget about Jerry Judy in this whole mix of things. And it could be a scenario where we end up all being right. Uh, it's not out of the realm of possibilities that Russell Wilson throws the ball more and more consistently throughout an entire season. And, you know, they let Russ cook finally, and you get a few wide receivers that are really fantasy worthy. And that's that's very possible. I mean, Tyler Lock and DK Metcalf are pretty fantasy worthy. You could get both these guys kind of right on that fringe, I think, of wide receiver one. So you don't have to apologize to me. The Joe Pizza Pia team, ladies and gentlemen, Josh Allen at the quarterback position, the running backs, A.J. Dillon and Damian Harris. Yes, okay, but the wide receivers, Jamar Chase, Devontae Adams, Cortland Sutton, and then I've got uh, Pat Frymuth at tight end, Kareem Hunt as my flex, Buffalo Bills defense, Devin Singletary, Alan Lazard on the bench, Chris Olave on the bench as well, Sony Michelle, David Joku, and Marvin Jones Jr. So, look, uh, as far as this roster goes, I wanted to go heavy, big time on the wide receivers. Whenever you go ahead and you take that Josh Allen pick, you have to know it's going to hurt you probably somewhere else. It was going to hurt me at running back. I knew the kind of guys that are going to be around that range. Those two guys were there. I got both of them. So that was the plan. But look, to me, it's like Ricky Bobby. You're first or last when it comes to quarterback. You take Josh Allen. You know what you're getting every single week with him. And you know that he's going to be the number one overall point getter probably in fantasy. And then on the back end of things, you, you will find ways to work things out. The one thing that cycles on the waiver wire is running back. So you can always find those guys and be aggressive there. And I wanted to go like Andrew, heavy wide receiver. So you could see a great range here. You saw the RB heavy draft with Mason. You saw the wide receiver heavy draft with myself and Andrew. And then you saw something in between with Derek Brown. So that's what we're trying to do, give you different looks from different spots here. Uh, Mason, it was so fun to hang out with you. You're a good sport for putting up with us for an hour. You can follow him on the Twitter machine at Build the Dynasty. And of course, check out uh, the Fantasy Flock Network. Tell us all the exciting things you got going on there right now, Mason. Mainly every single day, videos and live streams going out on Fantasy Flock Network. Don't care about Twitter. All I would do is get on the little YouTube machine, look up Fantasy Flock Network. Bam, you're going to see like five different channels pop up, a million different videos that have all probably been uploaded within the last 24 hours. And you get ready awesome. for some bad fantasy football advice. Yeah, there we go. I love it, Mason. Uh, I love that you have a sense of humor about it, a sense of humility about it, which we could all use a little bit more of in this industry, but a lot of knowledge as well. Great stats, great uh, contributions today to the program. You two are okay also. Derek Brown, Andrew Erickson, uh, my favorite people in the world, all, all, all kidding aside. I love my friends here. And uh, I want to remind everybody, if you want to get in on this, once again, there's a way to do it. And that way is to go and have some mock drafts with your friends over at fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. Once again, the uh, the draft simulator is, is out there. It's ready to be used. The public mock drafts will be available this preseason, but 
You can already create your own, send the links to your friends like we did today. You can draft against the bots right now in the simulator. The other day, true story, I ran six mocks just to kind of get a feel for things because that's how we get prepared by training ourselves. And of course, the best place to do that is with the wizard over at fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. And don't forget to, uh, in case you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fantasypros. All the episodes of the podcast are on there. The short form videos, the long form videos, everything in between. Subscribe, like this video if you're watching it, please. It's literally the least you can do and it means so much to us. So please give us a like here on the YouTube channel and don't forget to click that little bell. So you know every time a great piece of content drops here because our team is working overtime for you to get you ready for all of your drafts coming up this fantasy football season. That'll do it for us, but the story of the game goes on for Andrew Erickson, and for Derek Brown, and for our new best friend, Mason Dodd. That'll do it for us. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros, so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.